So here we have the Imre Nag Short Hungarian Bow. Now, as the name suggests, this is a Hungarian company, and Imre Nag does make a lot of very nice uh, low to mid range budget bows. Now, I bought this used or second hand from a local shooter uh, because it was too heavy for him, and ironically, it's a bit too heavy for me. So I'm actually not very good at using it, um, but I'm going to give it a fair review based on my best shots and how it feels. Um, now, I bought this because it looks looked amazing. As you can see, uh, this particular bow has the red wood finish, it has the blue accents, uh, and I really wanted a bow which stands out, and most of my standard bows are red. Uh, now it turns out that this is not the actual default colour, um, those who've used this will know that most of these bows are brown wood. So one of the options which the Imre Nark bows have is the option to choose personalised colours. So they use dyed wood and different serving accents which we'll showcase later on. So this isn't what it normally looks like, if you pay a bit extra you can customise it. So this is a custom short Hungarian, um, that's why I bought it in the first place. The bows produced by Imre Nark have very similar designs, and while they have different historical inspirations and shapes, their construction is mostly very similar, being of multiple layers of laminated wood and fiberglass. Again, the main uh, appeal is the customization. So the base cost of these bows is around 220 euro, which is about the same in US dollars, uh, and depending on your customization, might be up to around 350 US dollars. Uh, this particular particular bow is the short Hungarian, uh, it's a Hungarian style bow obviously, and there are actually other versions of this including the long Hungarian and the extra short Hungarian. The short Hungarian is a 60 inch uh, version of the bow, and as you can see here, um, the red version is extremely striking. Again, all these things are customizable. The color of the wood varies from a natural brown to red to green to ebony black. And you can also customize the servings and the grip. So again, the serving material on the lip tips is a really nice natural looking decoration. It doesn't affect the bow performance in any way, but it does look very aesthetically pleasing. There's something simple about it. It's not particularly fancy, like it's not painted or decorated, but just the wrapping of a few serving threads makes it look quite nice to the eye. And again, these are fully customizable colors. In this case, the original owner chose a blue to contrast with the red. Um, the grip is also customizable. Uh, you can have no grip or you can choose to have an oxide grip. An oxide grip is a very soft leather. And again, the color is uh, fully customizable. In this case, it's a light blue color. The website does claim to be uh, authentic and describes the bow as having a dynamic and calm steady draw. Now I will attest to this in my experience, it is a fairly steady draw and I particularly like its wide limb design and its long seas which I'll talk about later on. Uh, these features do make for a very comfortable uh, and very stable draw which is very important when uh, doing target shooting for me um, but it generally is quite a smooth bow to shoot. Now, what I do also like is the shape of the grip. It is a fairly deep uh, concave uh, grip um, and it does lend itself to being held in the center. So the grip is very natural and intuitive and overall it was a very easy bow to get used to using. So I'm going to take this bow out to the 50 meter range and shoot. Uh, as I said earlier, I am a little over bowed. Um, I would normally shoot as like a 40, 45 pound bow. Uh, this one is a 52 pound bow, so it's quite significant. Um, I probably had a more ambitious training program for it, but uh, I've, I've had it for years and I really, I really wanted to showcase this. Uh, and I haven't had time to really try to using it. Uh, I am able to use it to a certain degree, but after like in you know, a half an hour, I'm pretty much spent. So uh, the first few distances are okay, but you'll probably see by 40, 50 meters, I'm actually pretty exhausted. So I'm not gonna judge the bow unfairly uh, because it is me, not the bow, um, but it was quite fun to use. You can see me struggle a bit and enjoy the bow at the longer distances. Not bad. Bad. Oh, clapping that one. Ooh. Oh, I thought that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, that was not a good one. Okay. Okay. I totally meant that. I think the first thing I really want to talk about when uh, evaluating the uh, short Hungarian is the value. Uh, the bow is priced in the typical low mid range, about like under 300 US dollars. And I honestly thought I was paying for a much more expensive bow. Now, like I said, uh, I bought this used or second hand for a pretty good price, over like 350 Australian dollars, which is around like 300 uh, ish US dollars. So that was a really good price. It's basically the price brand new because it's barely used, minus the shipping cost. And that's really what kills the price for many of these bows. The price of the bow itself is usually pretty good value. But the cost of shipping is going to cost like a fair big portion of the bow itself because these bows are one piece. They come in an extra long uh, shipping box which costs quite a bit, consider weight and of course any taxes um, and it does accumulate in price. So um, if you are just judging it based on the value of the bow itself, this is a very good value bow. I would label this as a mid-range workhorse bow but it does have the aesthetics and a bit of the feel of a tier above that. So it's more like a mid-range bow or mid-high bow, despite being a mid-low price range. So it doesn't have the same smoothness in draw as a bow with different materials and different layers of laminate, especially the high performance bows with more fiberglass or with carbon layers. Uh, but what it does have is a very functional and stable draw. That's really the first thing which got to me was the stability of the bow. Um, the long design, this is the short Hungarian, the longer ones are probably more stable. But there are two things which really make this stable. Number one is the width of the limbs. Um, this is not a narrow bow, it's fairly wide. The grip is fairly narrow, but the limbs are fairly wide, which makes for a more stable draw. But also the very long tips or the sears. Uh, the length of these lends to a very stable draw. So while it is a little aggressive to draw, um, it is very stable to hold. Um, so I'm very pleased with the feel of this. Additionally, when you have the uh, grip in mind, the grip is really comfortable. It's not overly padded, so you can definitely feel the bow and get a sense of how strong you're gripping it. But it's also soft enough where you're not going to feel abrasive, it's not going to be too slippery. It's the kind of just right wrapping and I really enjoy holding it. Plus the natural concave of the bow grip means you want to hold it in the right place. So it's very comfortable to hold. Um, overall, the aesthetics are very pleasing and the feel is very pleasing and the draw is very stable. So let's just recapture that feeling and uh, shoot a few quick arrows here. It's been a day since I shot last time, so I've recovered. Unfortunately, I overbowed, so I'll do a few shots here to get a fair assessment of it, knowing that I can't shoot for long. Um, but I really did enjoy shooting it um, like yesterday at 50 meters. So let's get the feeling back, proper alignment. Oh, that feels good. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, definitely, if I want to shoot a heavier draw weight, if any person wants to shoot heavier draw weight, you've got to train for it. Like, you can't kid yourself and say, I'm going to passively get strong enough to shoot a 50 pound bow. Many people who do shoot 50 pound bows are already fit and well conditioned, or they shoot a lot, like every day, and run them like once a week, like I do. So, um, I do need to train up if I want to shoot it seriously. But nonetheless, that's a very nice feeling bow. another one oh feels good feels good that that's a punchy bow like I said it just feels so stable um, it's not the smoothest bow I've drawn but it's not rough either it just feels stable and that's kind of my, my overall impression of this bow is the length and the length of the sears and the width of the limbs and the size of it, and this is the short version. It just feels stable. Um, very fun to shoot. Oh, and the more I shoot, the more I enjoy it actually. Like, 
Uh, these things just work well together. And this is again, a, a high value bow for a relatively low price that has the things working together. The laminate wood works and looks nice. The decorations aren't too eyesore-ish. They're actually quite good. They match really well. And the bow feels good. That's another one. Oh, that feels good. It feels like a very balanced bow. Um, and that's my overall impression of it. Uh, there's just so much to like about this uh, that I actually want to keep on shooting it. <laughs> that's a good motivation. It's a bow you want to shoot. Oh, nice. So I'm overbowed. I'm kind of fatigued. not going to lie about that. So that's why I'm not being hard on how hard it is to shoot. That's me. But when I am shooting well with it, oh, I like it more and more. I haven't had much chance to shoot this because it is too heavy, but uh, the more I use it, the more I enjoy it. This is definitely on the category of well worth the money if you can get this. Um, I do like everything about this. It is such a stable bow. Uh, pluses to the aesthetics, the fact that it's fully customizable in terms of color, serving, grip, wood. Um, this is a really good bow for the price, very appropriate for the style of archery. Um, this is overall a big thumbs up from me. I really enjoy using it. Definitely uh, something to look forward to if you're trying a sort of archery. Even a bow to collect, um, lots of varieties from uh, Imre Nagi, uh, and this is just one of them. Uh, but this one, the short Hungarian or the Hungarian style bows, um, definitely a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, I'm very impressed, I really enjoy shooting it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you all for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time.